Hello and welcome to season four of the Gauntlet of Greatness. I'm Randy Bueller, joined by my normal partner in crime, Shadow Nutella. How are things? Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. You know what else is awesome? Well, among, I guess, among the things that are everything, no bandless modern. This tournament is going to be crazy. We are going to do four groups of four decks each. This is now the official format for Gauntlet of Greatness. We got a group stage. Top two decks from each group go to the top eight playoff. We get to play lots of magic. And that means that every one of these no bandless modern decks, you're gonna get to, you're gonna get to see it at least twice. Now, a, a hundred deck lists came in to the deck list submission contest. Super cool. I went through all of them. I've picked 16 of the decks that look to me to be kind of the, the best cross section of what you can do with no bandless modern. I'm sure there are better decks out there. I'm sure once if a metagame ever evolves, there are gonna be ways to beat it, but we're just plowing ahead and learning. We've got all the greatest hits, all the cards that have been ever been banned. You know, the tail of the tape on some of these decks is just awesome. You know, this this deck has cards that were banned in standard. This decks have cards that are still played in vintage. It's it's kind of ridiculous. So we are super excited to get started. And the first match that we are gonna start with. Elves against Pod. So group A happens to have two green decks that happen to be paired in the first round. This is a thing that's allowed to happen. Here is the Birthing Pod deck. Now, Birthing Pod is relatively recent and modern. I mean, it, in terms of like the tail of the tape, in terms of banned cards, well, you get your Green Sun Zenith, which, which did get banned. You get your Birthing Pods, one of the most recent additions to the modern banned list. I don't know that this deck is going to feel as ridiculous as some of the other decks, because it's still kind of a grindy value deck, right? You've got Hand Destruction, you've got Mana Acceleration. Oh, there's another banned card, Death Rite Shaman. And Skull Clamp is a banned card, so... You know, it's kind of got its Stoneforge Mystic. It's kind of got its fair share. Um, but fundamentally, the strategy is about having a bunch of situationally good cards and then having these tutors in Birthing Pod and Green Sun Zenith that can go get the right thing for the right situation. Um, in the matchup we're about to play against the Elf deck, I think the right thing is often going to be Orzhov Pontiff, which can slaughter many, many Elves. Or it's going to be the Infinite Life combo of Spike Feeder plus Archangel of Thune. That's... I don't think the Elf deck can deal arbitrarily large amounts of damage. In fact, I know it can. It can, can deal hundreds, but Spike Feeder Archangel does, in fact, win the game. Uh, over in the sideboard, too, you've got things like Aether Sworn Canonist and uh, Eidolon of Rhetoric that can definitely shut down combo. And so we'll see. Can, can the value deck with all of the, the answers and the hate compete, or is it going to be about broken stuff? Now you want to talk broken stuff. Let's look at this Elf deck. I like the uh, the four mental missteps. You're going to see that in a lot of these lists. Like, mental misstep is just kind of ridiculous. And in fact, this deck relies on a lot of one drops, right? Skull Clamp is obviously super value. I mean, maybe there should only be three of them in the deck, but the card's ridiculous. Glimpse of Nature is really the engine that makes this deck keep going. Turns every spell into a cantrip. And because you've got a mana engine with uh, Nettle Sentinel and... Um, where is he? There's too many one drops. The Heritage Druid. You can just play all the elves that you draw. You can play them just as quickly as you draw them. Uh, Death Rite Shaman. Sure, why not? Shaman of the Pack can finish people off. Um, there's a Crater Hoof Behemoth in here, which is going to be the most common way to finish people off. And then, of course, Green Sun Zenith. So this is essentially the deck that Luis Gad Vargas won Pro Tour Berlin with. Plus, they kept printing cards, and you know you haven't really been able to play this deck anywhere in its form since Luis won that Pro Tour. So, I don't know. I'm kind of excited to see how this works out. You uh, you got to pick Shadow. Are you, you going to confidently make the case for your pod deck? Uh, no, I'm not going to confidently make the case for my pod deck. <laughs> All right. I can do this though. Secret sideboard tech. Did you leave me gut shots? Uh, there are no gut shots in your sideboard. Your sideboard. I, I don't has... know how I'm going to win. The not-so-secret tech in your sideboard is going to be just fine here, I think. All right, let me set up a match. I'm going to play the elf side of the matchup. I am going to set up a match, make sure we don't have to worry about the clock. And all right, I'm hosting a match. Come fight me. Meanwhile, I will mute you on Skype. We can chat more after the match. Good luck to you, sir. Sounds good. Good luck to you. What do you guys think out there in the chat? Got a nice crowd for our debut show. That's nice to see. 
I mean, this this seems like it should be the Elves deck, right? I don't know. Lots of cool decks in this format. Uh, but Elves has to come in. I mean, look, I, I did do seeding. To, I rolled up these groups at random, right? I took the 16 decks that I thought were the best 16, and then I said, here's what I think are the best four, the next four, the next four, the next four. And so each group is just one at random from that top group, one at random from the second group, one of the three seeds at random, one of the four seeds at random. I think that... I, I gave the Elves deck a, a one seed. I think it's one of the more ridiculous things you can do. I do think that it's, it's a little on the fragile side, though, right? It's... It's going to be vulnerable to Chalice of the Void. It's going to be vulnerable to, you know, things like Orz Orzov Pontiff, any kind of sweeper effect that can really just kind of slaughter all the elves. So, I mean, it's got some resiliency. It's got the ability to, to be a beatdown deck. It's got the ability to skull clamp. Um, but we'll find out. All right. Here we go. Season number one, match number one. Lost the die roll, but that should be all right. What does this hand do? So I have a land. I have fetch land into death right. I have zenith that I can accelerate with. So I can effectively play a land of war. This hand's got to be keepable. I'm trying to build up to a big glimpse turn. I think the current turn one play is Dryad Arbor. Or I just need more mana. Right, and then if I have a land for turn two, I can go glimpse into what, Nettle Sentinel, Deathrite Shaman, make some value. Uh, I probably want to misstep that, right? Yeah. No mana critters for you. Alright. So I just get forest or do I need the black mana? Can't imagine how it's gonna matter. I'm gonna go ahead and get black mana. Especially since I have a shaman in my hand. And of course that land has summoning sickness, so we're done. Kinda would like a land, not gonna lie. Razor Verge Thicket, all right. I mean, with how do I play this next turn? I just glimpse into death right and then hope I draw a land for Nettle Sentinel, right? I'm gonna have the draw step and the first glimpse card. I mean, what else am I gonna do? I think that's how I have to play it. Oh, a land. Very nice. That's right. Draw a card. Not really a card I want in my hand, but we'll get there eventually. Nettle Sentinel. Draw a card. Alright, shaping up to be kind of a beatdown game. We'll see how this plays out. This is no longer a practice match. Let me pull that tag down. Sorry about that. This format should be super fast. I feel like I've had a slow draw. I mean, it's turn two, and all I've done is get three creatures into play and draw two cards. Now, the pod deck is operating at pod deck speed. I don't think this pod deck is particularly faster than the normal than the pod deck that's, that was in Modern six months ago. I mean, it's, it's a little more broken. It's a little more powerful. Don't know that it's particularly faster. Man, I've just drawn all the stupid fatties. What do I do now? I have one, two, I have max four mana.
The Kitchen Finks is actually playing defense reasonably well. What a silly draw. I mean, I can play Dwinan's Elite. The problem is I can't play Dwinan's Elite and Shaman of the Pack. I guess I just play Dwinan's Elite and activate Deathrite? It's kind of lame, but what are you going to do? I don't think I want to attack Nettle Sentinel into Kitchen Finks. No, I'm not about to play Shaman of the Pack. Sure. I have a grand total of two expensive creatures in my deck, for the record. There's a Crater Hoof Behemoth, and there's a Rurikthar. That's it. That's the whole suite of expensive creatures in the deck. Oh, I could have attacked into him and eaten it with Deathrite Shaman. It's if he blocks to stop the persist trigger. That probably was worth trading off an Nettle Sentinel of the Winans Elite. I mean, I can still do it on a future turn. I kind of didn't want to trade creatures while I'm going to play Shaman of the Pack. But no, I don't think I want you to have a Skull Clamp. No, sir. Sorry. These mental missteps do not seem particularly fair. Yeah, I guess we can do Shaman, and then I won't have the mana to do the Death Rite trick. Unless I draw a land. Hmm. I guess he's gonna get a skull clamp. Uh, my opponent does not have four mental missteps. The uh, some I mean I went with the deck lists that were sent to me. I didn't really modify anything. I mean, a couple times, like the Delver list that I chose, I then discovered accidentally had 64 cards, so I trimmed four. Um, but I mean, other than just fixing obvious mistakes, that's the only mistake I've actually fixed. Um, I basically went with the deck list that people sent me, and some of the people are just like, you should have Mental Misstep in the main deck. And so not everybody did that. Honestly, don't know which one's right. I mean, the card's obviously kind of ridiculous in the format, especially good against this elf deck. Which means I think anybody building an elf deck is thinking of it. Alright, so we've got a land, which means I can play Shaman, and then I can attack into Kitchen Finks, and I can eat it with the Persist Trigger on the stack is how that works, right? So, play the Shaman first. Oh, I guess I get a Forest first. No persist for you. We're a beatdown deck this game. This is what we gotta do, right? I mean, I am ahead on board. One, two, three, I'm at five mana, so next turn I can actually cast for Rekthar. Exciting. Well, next land I can cast for Rekthar. Doesn't seem the most exciting in this matchup, but. Sure. Stone Forge can pick up a Skull Clamp. Thalia. Okay. First Strike. First Strike's pretty good. I don't have an elf! <laughs> How absurd. I don't have an elf in my hand. I can't play Rorikthar this turn. And there's stupid First Striking Thalia sitting over there. So this turn is Guiltleaf Palace tapped. 
go. You're not an elf, are you? Any hidden stupid creature types? Yeah, I can't attack into Thalia. And I'm not in love with attacking into Stoneford, so... We do have Death Rite, though, so... Are there any... Yeah, that's, I've got a misstep and a glimpse left. So I can still deal four. These are just the two worst creatures to draw. My deck, my game, my deck felt pretty good through three turns. I don't know. You know what? Those missteps. If those were actual like creatures that could advance my board position, maybe that would have been better. I don't know. I mean, I stopped a death right and a skull clamp. Those feel pretty good. He just he has a skull clamp anyway. <sighs> Whatever. I'm not not like I'm in any. Not like I'm under any pressure here. He has to pay two life for his birthing pod through Thalia. I can live with that. Although I wish I'd gotten Rurikthar down first, not gonna lie. Interesting. All right, now if I just attack him, he takes three damage down to three. That's not good enough. If... Skull Clamp costs two. I just play Rurikthar, right? Man, the fact that that Guilt Leaf Palace came into play tapped was savage. See what happens. We have a large man. Makes my skull clamp a little painful, but I don't think attacking made sense there. Like I could have gotten in a couple damage, but I would lose two creatures. And the thing is, yeah, I need these creatures. I mean, no, attacking doesn't do anything there at all. I mean, you can, I can make a case for playing the Skull Clamp before Rurikthar, because it's going to sting if I play it later. But I don't want to get this guy down. And it's probably not going to change anything to take six damage off of it anyway. Yeah, if you want to play Modern No Ban, if you want to play No Banless Modern on Magic. Oh on Magic Online. The trick is you put your decks in freeform. So, I mean, it's a trick I've been using in Gauntlet of Greatness for a while, right? A lot of these historical standard decks aren't even legal and vintage sometimes. So, uh, freeform is the format you want. And then, obviously, the game is just going to allow anything, so it's kind of up to you to not cheat on your deck list. Um, but that's that's how we're playing No Bandless Modern. Alright. Stoneforge. Draw two cards. Not bad. Not bad. What is he going to get for three? I mean, he could get a Spike Feeder, but he's not particularly close to Archangel. Yeah. Spike Feeder, Archangel, Thune is an infinite combo that I cannot beat. But he's not particularly close to the Archangel. I mean, I guess next turn he can play a land and a four drop. That would be bad. But what is he taking three here? One mana short of this crater hoof, right? Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one mana short of crater hoof. I think I just take the damage from the skull clip. What happens? So Folly is the annoying one. Huh. 
probably want the ability to deal two with death right so i can get him to two but i mean he's got spike feeder so suiciding in doesn't actually do much attacking with rurikthar though forces him to chump block question is whether i attack with anybody else I'm gonna. Yeah, I think next turn is the better turn for an Alpha Strike. Well, if I'm gonna be playing the Skull Clamp, I think I should do it pre combat. I don't think taking six hurts me here. And now I get to see if anything exciting is going to happen. Land or Elf is not bad. Shouldn't have played the Rotary Catacombs, should have played the Guild Leaf Palace. That was actually quite bad. Oh, and I should have tapped Arbor for Elf. Wow. I, lots of little details I'm getting wrong. Funny. I would have got a mana if I'd waited. Uh, I think this is one going to want to get a Dryad Arbor because I'm pretty close to swarming. If he goes four drop, four drop into Archangel, I just lose. I don't think I can do anything about four drop into Archangel. Interesting. Did he need that mana? Because if I could have... <sighs> wow. I can death right to put him at one. If I'd alpha, if I did an alpha strike, I could have prevented this. No, he can tap bird. It doesn't matter. He can tap bird. I didn't do anything wrong. He didn't need to pay the two life because he could have just done the bird of paradise. I don't know. Maybe there's a line. I don't. I mean, I could have done an alpha strike to put him in la in pressure for his land, but by my count, I could get him to one. And now this combo is just lethal. Takes a counter off spike feeder. I can't do anything about him taking a counter off spike feeder, and I can't beat infinite life. Good game. Wow. So. My combo deck kind of sputtered. I drew the Crater Hoof and the Rurikthar. Rurikthar is not go actually good against him. It's way better as a Dragon Lord of Tarka. I don't, I mean, Misstep is okay against him, but it's not like, oh my god, game breaking. And I need to bring in, I need to deal with the sideboard cards. So I'm going to bring in Abrupt Decays instead of Mental Missteps. <sighs> you know, I, can, I have to be able to blow up a Jete or an Aether Sworn Cannonist. I have anything else that's bad? I mean, I want my basic combo package. I can't believe I lost that game. Yeah, I was just one turn from getting him. It was that, that Guilt Leaf Palace coming into play t untapped would have been the entire game. Like, if I play a land there, I get Rurikthar a turn earlier. I'm attacking a turn earlier. Ugh. Ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think scavenging ooze is worth it. He's got a couple of persist creatures, but I'm gonna run it like this.
Yeah, to be clear, the reason I conceded there is because Spike Feeder plus Archangel of Thune is infinite life. Like, Shadow can just take, you just take a counter off the Spike Feeder to gain two life. Archangel triggers and puts a plus one, plus one counter on every creature you control, including the Spike Feeder. Oh, look, you can take a plus one, plus one counter off the Spike Feeder now, and it's go down to one, one again. And you gain two life, and every creature gets a plus one, plus one counter. So he can gain arbitrarily large amounts of life. And I have no infinite combo. My deck is a combo deck, not in the sense that it loops, just in the sense that it kind of goes off and can do a bunch of stuff all in one turn. Um, oh, I wrote the score down wrong. <laughs> Freudian slip. I was felt like I was supposed to win, but in fact, it's the pod deck that goes up a game here. Yeah, so I cannot beat an opponent on a million life. It just isn't a thing that uh, this elf deck is capable of doing, so I just scooped. Didn't want to make him go through the motions. Huh. Well, that was a surprise. Now what? All right, I have two green sun zenith, a bunch of green sun zeniths. I guess that, I mean, that's gotta be a keeper, right? I mean, I just draw cards, draw cards. I mean, what am I trying to get to if it isn't mana acceleration and Elvish Visionaries to set things up? Like, I can go get a Heritage Druid. I mean, I, obviously I want a Green Sun Z. I mean, a, uh, a Glimpse of Nature, but I think I keep this. I feel like the first green sun just wants to get Dryad Arbor. Because then on turn two, I can. Yeah, I can get any two drop I want. He's mulliganing. Okay. next turn I can visionary and then I can green sun zenith for another dryad if I want to accelerate my mana doesn't feel like I need mana though feels like I need cards There's the glimpse, nice. That's when you cast a creature spell. Hilarious. So now I don't want to death right, which is gonna be my plan. I could green sun zenith for, z for zero to get another dryad arbor, give myself more mana, or I can wait a turn, I can green sun zenith for like visionary heritage druid type things. Doesn't feel like Dryad Arbor is what I'm building up to. I think I just wait. Like I don't want to waste the Shaman on a turn where I don't have a glimpse effect going. And I don't want to waste the Green Sun Zenith on a mere Dryad Arbor, which doesn't do enough on this board, I don't think. Spell Sky. Does that do anything? Defend Skull Clam from Rex Age, I guess. Blocks, I guess. Hilarious. So I can, I can glimpse, glimpse, death right. I can also take a turn to set up, right? I can get, I can get Nettle Sentinel Heritage Druid. Can I do that this turn? I can, right? They're both ones. I can Zenith for Heritage Druid. I can Zenith for Nettle Sentinel. And then next turn, I can go Glimpse, Glimpse, Death Right, cross my fingers. Sounds like a pretty good line. The only thing that might be better is if... If I Zenith now, 
If I Zenith for a Visionary, I can draw an extra card. It doesn't sound worth it. it seems like I could get my combo, combo cards. I'm not missing anything, right? I want a Heritage Druid and a Nettle Sentinel. And then I just hope I can go off to the races next turn. Boy, go off to the races this turn. I mean, I don't think it's worth it. Like, he's, I'm under no pressure. I could hypothetically tap these three creatures for three green mana, but I don't see any reason to try to win on this turn. Yeah, I don't want to spend that GGG. Next turn, give me an untap step. Give me three more mana. Let's see if we can win next turn. I do miss Wirewood Symbiote. Wirewood Symbiote, is, I mean, Queer on Ranger is also good, right? Queer on Ranger is pick up a forest to untap a creature you control. Wirewood Symbiote is pick up an elf to untap a creature you control. Um, they are in... They are not in Modern, though, right? They're in... What is it? Onslaught, which predates Modern? I'm pretty sure those aren't in Modern. If those are in Modern, then somebody misbuilt me an elf list. Visions, right. Neither's in modern. Visions is where the... Uh... I don't want to play Scrib Ranger. That doesn't seem worth it. It's both not an elf and it's two mana, right? Yeah, Symbiote's in the Onslaught block. Um, Gattic Okay, so he's turned off my ability to, like, fetch out a Crater Hoof, I guess? Yeah, he's turned off my Green Sun Zenith. I shouldn't need those from here. Ha! Wow. That's funny. So whenever I cast a creature spell, what is this? Is whenever I cast a green spell, though, right? So I'm gonna make mana before I cast the first glimpse. Just keep glimpsing, right? This has to be right. Land War, Catacombs, Skull Clamp, Shaman. That all looks pretty good. So I still can't quite make the three mana till after I get Land or Elves into play. Two more Nettle Sentinels. A Green Sun Zenith that I can't play. All right. Hey, not also no. I don't care what order they go on. How are you really gonna make me do this? And I can't quite tap three. 
isn't F7 supposed to say I don't care? Why is F7 not letting me? Oh, that one is auto yes. Always yes. Always yield. Now we are officially off to the races. What do we want to cast? Oh, I guess I can abrupt decay Gaddictig, which is going to let me green sun zenith for crater hoof. We welcome to No Bandless Modern. Always yes. I guess I have to be careful not to deck myself. Oh, there's the crater hoof. Sure. So this guy. Trample and plus X plus X. So it's just a matter of getting enough stuff into play to be lethal. And enough mana to cast him. Dwinan's Elite turns a better profit than Lenor Elves, I think. Sure it does. Make three mana. Play another Dwine and Elite. Put all my triggers onto the stack. Yeah, I mean, I, I could have, I guess Spellskite actually almost mattered in that. I briefly thought about using Abrupt Decay to deal with Gaddic Teague, except I don't need to deal with Gaddic Teague. I drew the Crater Hoof, which is which is my kill card. I don't actually care about Gaddic Teague because Crater Hoof's a creature spell. I mean, what I care about is getting enough mana and enough creatures. Do I even need more? Eh, whatever. Let's throw out another. I don't know why F7's not working. Uh, another one drop. Is it lethal yet? What do you think? I think we're probably lethal. Um, oh, that's 11 mana. That's enough. Kablam! And that is how the Elves deck is supposed to work. What turn was that, anyway? I mean, I slow played it, right? I decided not to go for it on turn three. Right, turn three, because I drew the glimpse on turn two, and then turn three, I could have, in theory, gone for it super tight on mana, and I just said, whatever, a Green Sun Zenith twice, I'll set up the turn four kill with just infinite to spare. And you know what? That was not exactly a close game. I think I, I mean I think I need the abrupt decays. You saw that he's got hoser cards. I think we run it like this. <laughs> Eldrazi in the side border. <laughs> I, I think you're supposed to bring them in against hypergenesis or bring them in against somebody who's milling you, but like the storm decks kill with grape shot. I don't think the storm decks actually kill with with decking you. Uh, so I think they're just there for hypergenesis, which is amusing. I mean, you do get to attack first. I'm not sure that works, but hypergenesis deck seems super scary. All right, I have one land. I have a green sun zenith. So I can play turn one Dryad Arbor, turn two Visionary into Elite. This hand is only okay 
It has the Crater Hoof Behemoth. So it's like a Molly. It's like a six card hand. Am I going to do better than those six? I feel like I can do better than those six from six. And I'll get a Scry. Yeah, I think that's a Mull. Sure, that seems better. Uh, that's probably a keep, right? I mean, I have two man. Yeah, that's a keep. can get it and this is just good old-fashioned turn one land or else game three now it's effectively a double elimination tournament where the way this group stage is going to work there's four decks in group a and next time we play group a the two winning decks will play for a spot in the top eight the two losing decks will play an illumination match and then after that, the one and one decks will play for the second spot in the top eight. So everybody has a loss to give. Said, I don't want to give it, especially against Pod, which I have as the fourth best of the four decks in this group. All right, we didn't draw a land. I mean, I can Visionary and cross my fingers. I can also Green Sun Zenith for zero. And Heritage Druid or Skull Clamp. Oh man. I mean, if there's a land on top, Visionary is totally the play. But if there's not a land on top, I guess Visionary turns Heritage Druid into three mana next turn anyway. Oh man, and if I hit a land, I get the three mana from the Heritage Druid. It's just, it's so much better if I hit a land here that I am going to go for it. Please? Ah. Still not bad for next turn, right? I still get to go Heritage Druid and to tap all three for three. So I'll have GGG, I can play, you know, I can start skull clamping things and or play Green Sun Zenith. There's the land. All right, so... Oh, it doesn't quite work. I can't quite Heritage Druid. I guess I can, I mean, yeah. If I'm gonna Abrupt Decay, I can, if I wanna, I kinda wanna go Abrupt Decay. What does that let me do? Abrupt Decay. How do I sequence this to do cool things? I can't. I can play Abrupt Decay and then one other thing. But if I'm gonna do that, I might as well play Heritage Druid and then Abrupt Decay on his end step so he can't play more than one thing on his turn, right? I mean, I can get in for a point. It's not very exciting. I guess I can also save myself two damages. No, no that's not happening. Oh, it could be Abrupt Decay and Arbor Dryad. That's better than Heritage Druid, because I can Heritage Druid next turn. Probably is better. Well, maybe I'm going to want this Green Sun Zenith to get like a Nettle Sentinel. No, I feel like just having creatures I can eat with Skull Clamp is good here. Yeah, I'm gonna get the Dryad Armor. It also accelerates my mana for next turn. All right, missed the land drop, had to abrupt a cane idle on, but I'm still in pretty good shape this game. I think. I mean, I've got mana 
He's still playing Bird of Paradise. Oh, here comes Birthing Pod, which is too big to abrupt decay. <laughs> Maybe I wish I had that Green Sun Zenith for Rex Age. Dwine is elite. That's a good card with Heritage Druid. So. I can play Heritage Druid, Dwine and Elite, and Skull Clamp and start eating Dryad Arbor. Sounds pretty good. I eat the non elves, right? It's like Dryad Arbor? Even though it taps for mana? I think that's right. Green Sun Zenith. And then Johnny Elves. Oh, I want a Green Sun Zenith for the Reclamation Sage, and I'm one mana short. So I can green sun zenith for a two. I mean, I can green sun zenith for. Eh. I think we just draw some cards. Glimpse of nature. So I have two mana available to me, which means I can't do a whole lot. Which means I can Green Sun Zenith for Nettle Sentinel and be ready to try to go off next turn with Glimpse? That's probably the right answer. May have been a slightly better way to pilot my way through that turn, but I am content. I am content. Orzhov Pontiff owns me here. Eh, it's not a slaughtering. Orzhov Pontiff three for ones me. Gets all the stuff that Skull Clamp gets. Spell Skate, okay. It's not an Orzhov Pontiff. Oh, it turns into an Orzhov Pontiff. Man, I don't. I, I wanted the Rex Age. I mean, obviously, I knew I wanted to get Rex Age. Yeah, I guess Ors of Pontiff is pretty good here. I didn't, I didn't see how to have the mana for the Reclamation Sage though, and I ate as many one drops. I guess I could have eaten the Visionary instead of playing the Nettle Sentinel. I guess that's a thing I could have done. I think my Magic Online is having issues. is pretty good here. Oh, he sacked Bird of Paradise, not Spellskite. Oh, we're fine. Yeah, I don't think I'm supposed to eat Llanowar Elf there. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to eat Visionary. Oh, he just wanted a canonist. Sure, no problem. You have an Aether Sworn canonist. Oh, it does mean I'm going to have to abrupt decay the spell skate. 
So that's all kind of annoying. Huh. So how do I play this? I mean, I have effectively infinite mana. He has a 2 2 and an 0 4. I can attack with Dwayne's Elite. That doesn't actually do anything. I mean, Spell Sky defending Canonist is annoying here. So I eat the Visionary to guard against Pontiff. I plan to Abrupt Decay on his turn. Then I'm hoping to find another Abrupt Decay or Rex Age or a way to get a Rex Age. And meanwhile, Aether's from Canonist is doing a pretty good job of holding my Skull Clamp in check. Sweet, another Abrupt Decay. But we only have the one black mana, but we can Abrupt Decay on his turn, Abrupt Decay on my turn. Do I want the Dwinan's Elite to die to Orzhov Pontiff? Because I could put a Skull Clamp on it and draw two cards, but no, I want to have an Elf in play for Heritage Druid. Do I want... Oh, I can actually get damage through with Pendlehaven, can't I? I can attack with Sentinel, Dwine and Delete, Heritage Druid. And if he blocks, then I have Pendlehaven. But I need the Land of War Elf mana. Check. Hmm. I probably could have done this with Elves Visionary, too. That's fine. Take four. Did I just not play a spell on my turn? It's funny. I tapped Pendlehaven and I didn't actually play any spells. It's funny. I kind of didn't want to play any spells. I don't even know what spell I want to play. I'm building up to a big glimpse of nature turn is the idea. So hilariously, I didn't want to play any spells on my turn. There's no reason to abrupt decay on my turn because I may as well let him be under the Aether Sworn Canonist on his turn. I mean... I'm pretty sure he's just going to redirect to Spell Sky, but what are you going to do? the second skull I don't know I'm pretty sure that one damage is worth it there like what am I playing on my turn I'm still worried about Orzhov Pontiff is he gonna sit on Gavany Township oh that's funny uh yeah I mean I can abrupt decay now Yes. I will. I want to abrupt decay end step. I don't want him to be able to play two spells this turn. Also, if he's going to Orzhov Pontiff me, I want him to be sacking a meaningful creature so that I can abrupt decay the other one. And then not have to spend my man on an abrupt decay next turn. Yeah, take the two damage. No problem. Now what you got? It 
Eternal Witness? Yeah, as is one spell for the turn, sure. Now he has an Eidolon in his hand. I think this is going to work out. Now he's either going to Pontiff me or he's going to leave Spell Sky to Aether Sworn Canonist. Oh, he's going to sack the witness. What does that get? I don't know what that gets. Gets a four. Oh, jeez. Seriously? Oh, I can't kill that with abrupt decay. <sighs> Stupid birthing pod! Ah, I was one banish short of getting a recollection sage, killing you. Oh, and I didn't respond. And I didn't respond, which means I don't get to abrupt decay. God damn it. I didn't know what was coming. Yeah, I have to respond to the birthing pot activation because that's not a triggered ability or anything. <sighs> Once he taps out his mana, I should just respond with the abrupt decay. Am I going to lose this match? Rex Age off the top. Where were you before? I feel like I still have to. No, I feel like I have to blow up the birthing pod. Like. My only chance here is that he doesn't just keep two for wanting me. I have the ability to blow up the canonist and the spells the canonist if I get time. Oh, is he redirecting? No, well, sure. Maybe he'll redirect this. Yep. Needed to respond with abrupt decay to birthing pot. I don't know if it's gonna matter. Lenvala is insane against me. Yeah, Lenvala is just really, 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 really good. Now here comes Eidolon. So kills me for the record. I have to race here, right? Kill the 2 2, attack with everything else. I don't know, maybe I was supposed to kill the 1 4. Probably supposed to kill the one four. I feel like I'm mostly beat. Rex Sage block is too easy for him, right? Yeah, I should have killed the I should have killed the one four. Maybe I should throw the Rex Sage away for damage here. Probably 
probably should have thrown the Rex Age away for damage. I can have two cards, or I can have. I don't want the two cards. Someday I'll draw lands. <laughs> Still no lands. Great. I mean, Dragonlord of Tarka would be awesome here if I can get to the mana. I mean, I'm pinched on three mana and one spell per turn, though. <sighs> More spell skates. Yeah, now I'm at eight. Ready to play the spell. Crazy game. Crazy game. You get just enough hosers. Well, obviously the birthing pod. That's kind of how the deck works, right? This guy just goes and gets all the situational one offs And my abrupt decays don't kill it. But Frexian mana made it come down as if it cost three mana. And then... I basically have all Reclamation's Age in my deck to kill it. And I couldn't get to Green Sun Zenith mana fast enough. Township. So this is six damage, so I should block and make him commit his mana, I guess. I don't know how this helps, but seems better than dying. I guess Rurikthar has reach. Sideboarded him out though, he's terrible in the matchup. Yeah, he just attacks me with a flyer next turn. Unbelievable. I mean, if it wasn't for Linvala, I could actually try to go off here. I mean, I have everything to win from here, except I can't do it without activating abilities of my creatures. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Shadow! I I got there! I got there! You did! Oh wow. Wow. Sideboard tech. The spell skites. 
They were <laughs> they were the key. They ah. slow the beat down and they stop abrupt decay from me turning you off. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the spell guides were not bad there. They didn't matter all that much. I mean, Linvala was the destroyed me. The thing is, I can't abrupt decay birthing pod because it costs four, and I can't abrupt decay Linvala because she costs four. Those were the permanents that beat me. Like, I still had more abrupt decays in my hand. Is the thing. Like, if I I could have abrupt decayed my way through everything, including the spell skites, but it doesn't do me any good if Linvala's on the table. That's true. She certainly does shut you down. Yeah, Linvala was. Oh my god. I mean, the spell skites were annoying. Linvala was game breaking. <laughs> sure, but I felt like I really needed spell skites. I really wanted to slow you down. Sure. No, they were and good. They, I, oh, they were. They were. It was a good yeah. call to have them. They did slow yeah. down my beatdown plan. They did slow down my abrupt decay dealing with your your uh, your hosers plan. Right. Well played. Good game. I should not win that match often. I don't think. I think that was skin of the skin of my teeth. Agree. Agree. But now you will be fighting for your life, and I just have to win one of my next two with Pod. It's true. So 